Okay, okay, I caved. I'll make you a video about the limits at infinity. Maybe it's just because Buzz Lightyear is so cute. All right, a reminder about horizontal asymptotes. When a function has a horizontal asymptote, okay, the limit as x goes to infinity or negative infinity. So as we're talking about way out here or way out here to infinity and beyond, corresponds to the location of that horizontal asymptote. More generally, we would call that the end behavior. What is happening at the ends of our graph as we go to positive infinity or as we approach negative infinity? Okay, so there's three possible cases for that horizontal asymptotes, which again, horizontal asymptotes, really it's more like end behavior asymptotes. Pre-calculus review. If I have a function that is a rational function with a numerator ratio comparing with a denominator, if our degree of our numerator is less than the degree of our denominator, so degree, then we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, which means the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of that function f of x will be equal to zero. If we have a situation where the numerator degree is equal to the weight of the denominator degree, then we have a horizontal asymptote. y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator which means that our limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of f of x will also be equal to the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. Our last situation then, right, two things, numerator could be less than the denominator, the numerator could be equal to, to the denominator, or the numerator could be greater than the denominator in terms of the degree of the polynomial. There's some nice AAA throwback words. This case, we have no horizontal asymptote. And the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of f of x does not exist. The reason it does not exist is that you will be forever going up or forever going down depending on the results of the division, which would be some sort of an oblique asymptote. So when we talk about the degree of the numerator versus the denominator, let's talk about, for instance, 6x squared over 2x to the third plus a bunch of stuff up here and a bunch of stuff up down here. By the time we're at infinity, all we care about is the fact that this is bottom heavy, goes to zero. If we end up with, let's say, 6x to the second over 2x to the second, this might have some other stuff, this might have some other stuff, but we would pay attention to 6 divided by 2, the horizontal asymptote would be 6 divided by 2, the limit would also be 6 divided by 2. The last one then, if we think about top heavy, even if there's more than that, or 2x squared and there's more than that, if I actually do this division, I end up with 3x. So, plus a bunch of other stuff that won't have impact on my result. So really what I'm looking for is does 3x, as x goes to infinity, does 3x go up to infinity? Or does 3x go down to negative infinity? Then if I was looking for the limit as x goes to negative infinity, I'd say, okay, the line 3x as I go to the left of my graph, am I going up or am I going down? So it's the result of the division looking at the oblique asymptote. Okay, a couple of examples that are in your notes packet. Determine the horizontal asymptotes of all of these. So here we have a ratio, a comparison of two things. This has technically a degree of zero. This has a degree of one. This is bottom heavy because the numerator degree is less than the denominator degree. So the limit as x, oh, just kidding. This says horizontal asymptotes. Do, 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 do. This horizontal asymptote will be y equals zero, right? It's a horizontal line, horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. This one says to find the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity. 
Well, let's think about this because we have a ratio, but sine does not have a degree that we can compare with the degree of x to the first. So we got to do a little bit more work. The limit as x goes to infinity, that's one question being asked. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity, sine of x over x. That's another question being asked, right? This plus or minus is technically two different questions. All right, well, as x gets really, 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 really big, then literally x gets really, 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 really big. x is approaching infinity on the bottom. Let's think about sine of x. Sine of x repeats itself over and over and over and over and over. But the biggest that sine of x could ever be in its whole life, the most it will ever be is 1. And if you take 1 divided by a big number, we're going to end up approaching 0. Okay? Now, again, it's what we're approaching. Sine at most could approach 1. So even if sine was approaching 0 at infinity or approaching negative 1, its lowest point at infinity, we know that the greatest, the heaviest that sine will ever be is simply 1. Likewise, if we go to negative infinity, sine of x is still only ever going to be as tall as 1 or as heavy as 1. x, then, will be approaching negative infinity. Well, 1 divided by a really big negative number, right? It's not actually infinity. It's a really big number. We're approaching negative infinity will also be 0. So both of these limits end up being 0. The last one is where things get a little dicey, and we got to start thinking about what's happening at either end. So find the end behavior. Well, the end behavior is what is happening out at infinity. And what is happening out at negative infinity. So all the way out to the right versus what's happening all the way out to the left. All right, so if we think about this, again, as a ratio problem, we are comparing. Well, the top is going to grow really big, right? Three times a really big number. The bottom, if we think about the degree of this, okay, this is where we've got to really think mathematically. By the time we're talking about infinity, really large numbers, does adding five really do anything? Nah. So really what we're talking about is taking the square root of a big number that's been squared. So a big positive squared, take the square root, you're gonna get back to that quote unquote big number. So this is really like comparing x to the first over a positive x to the first. So we get a three over one, this limit will be equal to three. This one, as we move in the negative direction, the top, now if we think as x goes negative, x to the first, the top is going to approach a negative 3. The bottom, though, we still have the square root of an x squared. And by the time we're out at negative infinity, this plus 5 has no impact or very little impact on our limit. So negative squared makes a positive. Take the square root, we have a positive. So this is like having x to the first. So we have a negative 3 over 1, which means negative 3. So if this ends up looking like on a graph, is that as we approach positive infinity, we're going to be approaching an asymptote of 3. But when we approach negative infinity, we're going to be approaching an asymptote of negative 3. Because remember, horizontal asymptotes can be crossed over in the middle. Tricky, I know. End behavior asymptotes, which are either slant or horizontal, are basically asking what's happening at the ends as x gets really big infinitely big, if you will, in either direction.